Praise the Lord. My name is Sean Henry Scott, Senior Elder of Opposition of Apostle in the Body of Jesus Christ. We're here today, December the 20th, 2014, the year of our Lord. Yes. And I'm honored to be with my brothers of the gospel. Yes. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Yes. We could be sitting here mourning the death of one of our friends and comrades in the gospel, but by the grace of the living God, we still got our elder friend Lopes here, who was the visionary yes. of, the, of the Light of the World show and the Sons of Thunder. And we got my, my friend, my, my road dog. Craig here, and uh, we got old Kurt Turner. Well, I, I I met him through Craig. He's always he always know how to get us in that spot we need to keep everything light. And we got our, the pillar. We got some pillars, and we got uh, the Johnny. I don't even know what what to call him. Just everything, whatever we whatever we need. He's gonna be bringing it to the rear, and I just I'm just happy to be here. I want to make sure I put that out there because it's, everybody know what I do. It's about it's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's yes. About everything else. Amen. And um, I don't want to. Uh, not, not mention Andrew. Andrew is another one of our brothers. Greg Joyner, Towns, and uh, and Lewis Breston. We, we ain't leave y'all out. We gonna keep doing this. Hey, John, you know, we, we ain't leave y'all. God got us here by the grace of God. We still here, so we gonna preach the gospel. I'm gonna come from a very familiar passage of scripture, which my brother has already shared with you, All right. All right. <laughs> in the form of John 3:16. And in 1998, God impressed on my heart the first time I've ever preached in my entire life on TV. Uh, the sermon, uh, the gift of eternal life. And when God put it on my heart to push my brothers, which I normally do, push or pull, that's my position in the, that's right. in the body. That's right. um, God said, look, I want you to preach the same sermon, but I have given you some revelation on the sense how you, it's 16 years later. See, yeah. every, some of us are a little plump now. Some yeah. of us got a little color in our hair. But <laughs> God, has, God has blessed us 16 years later. Everybody can't say that. It's unfortunate that some brothers are going on to be on with the Lord. So we're going to come from a very... Familiar passage of scripture, so familiar I didn't even need my Bible, so that way I won't go over my time. It's for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. that whosoever believeth, that's the point I want you to, to, to think about. If you don't hear nothing else I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to stick that point in your ear. Whosoever believeth in him yes. should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right. So I want us to, to focus on that whosoever believeth, because I'm going to hammer that to you before I get out of here. It's the biggest misconception of this text. Is the fact that people think because God loved the world that everybody's going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Love ain't got nothing to do with salvation. Right. And that's a huge misconception. When I preached this sermon in 1998, I thought God, everybody, he, he, because he loved everybody, everybody's going to be saved. Right. I thought homosexuals had a chance to be saved. I thought, but one thing God tells us in his word that's crystal clear that he loves you, but he hates your sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's now we all, we all, every, every man in here got a son or a daughter, and we love our kids to life. But when they yeah. do something that we don't like, right. we gotta pull that belt off, or we gotta say something that we don't necessarily like to do because we know in that chastisement, right. we're gonna find out how much love there is really there. That's right. That's right. Now we're living in a day and time right now where even a man by the name of Adrian Peterson would get a switch and whip his child and be faced with jail, oh. incarceration. So we're living in a time that if you don't have the whosoever believeth in your life. You can get incarcerated for just living the gospel, My God. regardless if you claim to be Christian or not. So we live in a time right now that we're, regardless of what kind of shirt you wear, shoes you wear, kind of house you got, how much taxes you pay, if you don't have the who sort of belief in your life, you're going to find yourself lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. It also says in 17, I'm going to skip over one more verse, for God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world. He said he didn't send him to condemn the world, but through him that you might be saved. Right. Now one thing I want you to understand is might. That's a big word. Uh, I might come home. I might have some money. I might live to see 2017. We don't know about that. That's a question mark only because of what? The whosoever believeth. Uh, you're not guaranteed to be saved, but it's up to you if you're saved or not. Any person you know to go to church, if you ask them what they say, they say, well, you, well, you ain't saved. Because that's, that's, that's a definite yes, yes by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. That's like me. You ask me, am I gay? Hell no. <laughs> I ain't got to think about it. I ain't got to blink about it. You know what I'm saying? It, there's some things you just don't have to think about it because I'm one of them whosoever believeth. I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm only here by the grace of God. Like I said, 16 years later, we, I could, these brothers can probably testify. We've been here all day long that we shouldn't even be here. There's been so many things that probably could have simply took us out. If it ain't nothing but just getting out the bed and breaking your old neck. Because we older now. Yes. How many yes. times you done got up and you felt like a little, man, what in the world? Like you've been fighting all night. You ain't done nothing. 
We know it's only by the grace of God that we can even walk, even blink without pain. That's right. That's that whosoever believeth, because one day, uh -huh. when, we, when we was in our lowest of lows, and we found our place in a dark place, and what we wasn't here buddies now. I didn't even know half these fellows then. I don't even know where you was at. That's your testimony. Mm -hmm. But one day, God found me in that state where I had to make a choice, and there was a road going that way and a road going that way. He said, right here is the whosoever believeth. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love you. Yes. But guess what? If you don't believe in me, there ain't nothing I can do for you. Mm -hmm. You are already Ooh. condemned. Verse 18 says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Yes. You want to know how to not be condemned? You believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. yes. mm -hmm. It ain't about no jail bars. No, it ain't about divorce. It ain't about none of that stuff. But if you, you want to not feel condemned, well, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Uh, no, you don't. Right. Because you're condemned. That's right. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not condemned. is condemned already. That's right. That's it ain't no mystery. You know, folks can speak in all, every kind of unknown tongue there is, can shout up a ceiling. But if you ain't got no belief in you, I don't care what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The devil do that better than everybody. Amen. Because he has not believed in what? The name of the only begotten Son of God. Mm -hmm. I'll come with you with the same offer I gave you in 1998. It ain't nothing new about this gospel. What, what God will do, like you said, he gave me the revelation that when I preach a sermon in 1998, that it just feels like when you first come into the kingdom, first time I preach, you just think God loves everybody, hug everybody, loves everybody, That's which right. he does. Mm -hmm. But there's a standard. Mm -hmm. There's a standard. Mm -hmm. You can't just do what you want to do and act the way you want to act and think you're going to get the same thing as a kid that's doing right. You, we just heard the brother preach about Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. And he made, he, he made he brought some revelation on that that I didn't even necessarily know about. Just because we preachers and we, we go to church and we Christians, that don't mean God can't shine on us that's and right. give us some revelation on something that's going to make our lives easier. That's right. that's so right. what I'm going to do, so the same thing I did in 1998, like the Lord told me to do, is to bring you the same thing I brought you last time. <laughs> and they laughed at me then, I'm like, they're going to laugh at me. See, I don't even celebrate Christmas, but they're really probably laughing. So in, in 1998, I brought... <laughs> I brought this, I brought a gift. I oh, would yes. not dare come into your house yes. and not bear a gift. But the gift I brought is not in this box. The gift I brought is right here. Hey! <laughs> the gift of eternal life. The gift that keeps on giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. God gave. What did he give us? He gave us an opportunity. He gave us something that we didn't even have a chance of getting. That's right. Your boy Steve Jobs, he got a job right now, and I pray he knew Jesus. Because if he ain't had no job, guess what? He's going to be working for the devil in, in, in hell, right. working on computers. Mm -hmm. We have a job to do for Jesus Christ. We have a job to let people know that whosoever believeth. We live in a time right now. You heard Dwayne talking about all the Arabs. And he, he, Dwayne rap on the Muslims. He, he, don't, he don't play with the Mishmaels. That's, that's that brother's calling, boy. He got us in trouble last time we preached. Uh -huh. Yeah, going he, he let him out. They calling us, threatening us, and whatnot. Thank God, though, before the terrorists, we all be in heaven right now, thanks to Dwayne. He ruffled, he ruffled them Ishmael's. He's like, I'm, I'm of Isaac. But y'all Ishmael <laughs> better not show up my house. <laughs> but we part of that whosoever believeth. And without that belief, you ain't going to have nothing. And I just want to share with you before I get out of here that there's three simple steps that was taught to me by the Mothers of the Apostolic Faith Temple. Give an honor where honors to do. I had a lot of people pour into me, a lot of people yes. with me and knock me up my side of my head. So when, Sean, why are you so crazy? Look in the mirror. Y'all did it. I didn't ask to be this. I thought I was good in the world until y'all, God's grace saved me, and y'all y'all pushed me and pushed me. This is what y'all got. So three simple steps. I want to make it real simple for you. If you're out there, you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You need to confess your sins. You need to confess, I'm a sinner. I need help. There ain't nothing that I got. There ain't nothing that I can do to make myself right. Come on. There's nothing. So you need to confess, I am a sinner, and I need to be saved. Yes. Number two. Repent. You need to be willing to turn from sin. What's that mean? Guess what? I hate to breast your bubble, but if you're having sex, getting your swerve on, you ain't ready for Jesus Christ if you're going to keep on doing that. You got to repent. That means turn and go the other way. If you're going this way in sin, you need to turn the other way and go to Jesus Christ. Oh, that's that old. No, ain't nothing old about being saved. Ain't nothing old about being saved. Ain't nothing old about the lake of fire. That's where you're going to go if you don't get saved. I know a lot of cats that can swim and a lot of cats who can't, but one thing I know can't nobody do is swim in the lake of fire. You can try to backstroke all you want to while the skin falling off your bones and worms is chomping on your butt, but I don't know nobody can swim, Michael Phelps, in that lake of fire. So you can smoke all the sugar weed you want, but if you don't know that Jesus got that whosoever believe it, you ain't going to be saved. So you got to turn and go. Repent means to turn and go the other way. The last and final point is the most important part of the three. All of them are important because what God is doing, he's converting you from who you was to who he needs you to be. Right. The last point is believe. That's we right. just talked about that. You need to believe what? That Jesus was born of a virgin birth. What does that mean? 
That means that Joseph did not touch her before they got married. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, that, that, oh, well, that's crazy. Exactly. You got to have that whosoever sort of believes to follow this Jesus because we can't see him or touch him. We hear him. We know he's there, but you're not going to believe him by your tangible and your intellect and your theology. Right, right, right. So he, he, she, would, she wasn't touched by a man. He didn't wear no condom. Wasn't none of that nonsense oh, going on. Right. Was not touched by a man. So you got to first believe that he was a virgin birth. Why? Because we heard the man of God preach that the, 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 the offering has to be unblemished. Yes. So he had to be an unblemished atonement. That's right. That's right. And then secondly, you need to understand that when, when, when that he walked and he lived 33 years. Mm -hmm. He lived. That's right. He was a man just like you and I. He had, he had what, 30, 30, 32 birthdays. I don't know if he made the 33rd because, you know, they was acting kind of crazy in that 33rd year. So mm -hmm. he, he, he lived like you and I did, 33 years, you know. Hey, Jesus had a birthday. You're 10 years old, 12. So it, let's not make a mystery out of this thing because some, some non-believers right. are like, how are you going to believe in a man or how are you going to believe in a white? Let me tell you something. I don't care what color Jesus is. That's right. I was dying in my sin and a hand came down and lifted me up. Hey. So I don't care if he paint. I'm saved. Amen. I'm tired of these black folks talking about how you going to serve a white Jesus. Let me tell you something. Let your car get in an accident and you burn about to die. Hey, help me. As a white man walk past, you going to tell him to go on? Come on, sir. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? Oh, my God. Y'all focusing on the wrong stuff. All I know is he saved me. So 33 years of life he lived. Now, finally, they murdered him, killed him. I preached that, uh, that this morning out of Acts chapter 9, how it was that Paul, he was just... Killing Christians and God flipped him and converted him and now he was saving Christians. They said, okay, we're going to kill him. Mm. So they killed him. Mm. But here's the most important thing that makes us different from Allah, Buddha, Confucius. <laughs> is that the God we serve got up. Hey! Oh, hey. Three days later, 72 hey! hours, put him on the clock. <laughs> he said he was going to get up and he got up. Well, how you know he got up? Because I'm saved. Come That's on. right. Because I'm part of that. Whosoever believes it. You can make it a mystery all you want to. I know the man I used to be, and actually so does that man too. Because we used to be doing it, do, doing it together. So we know who we used to be. So you can't tell me I ain't saved. <laughs> you can't tell me I ain't saved. We used to see, see girls, we, our neck break. Our neck break. Now, this, now it goes, but it only goes so far now. Because I got Jesus. <laughs> Let me get out of here. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I go by the position of an apostle. And I, I pray this is the beginning of what us brothers are going to continue to do. If nothing else, we're going to pray together so we can stay together. Yes. May God bless you. And if you don't get nothing else in this 2014, y'all see how crazy it is out there. Folks cyber hacking Sony. And y'all worried about y'all little pictures. Anything you put out there, it's out there. And this is what I want to go viral. And I'm going to close. This is what I want to go viral. I want every God-fearing, believing, who's sort of believing Christian to take Jesus viral. That's right. Y'all worry about something going viral. Let's take Jesus viral. Hey, hack, hey. hack that. Hey. You can hack that. May God bless you. May heaven's face continue to always smile for you. Woo!